testimony continued for a second day in the murder trial of a man accused of killing three family members in Sullivan County. In the hushed stillness of Tennessee, where the shadows dance with secrets, a tale of darkness begins to unfold. Brace yourselves, for we are about to embark on a journey into the enigmatic depths of the Rose family tragedy. As the sun dips below the horizon, it casts long shadows that cling to the edges of a once serene suburb in Bristol. The Roses, an ordinary family on the surface, were destined to become characters in a story that transcends the boundaries of the mundane. The Rose family lived in a small neighborhood of Bristol, Tennessee, until they were involved in a tragic occurrence. Curtis and Lena Maria Rose, the family's senior couple, had two adult daughters and six grandkids. The home was occupied at the time of the crime by the elderly owners, Curtis and Lena Maria Rose, their oldest daughter Tosha Milhorn, her husband James, and their six children. Tosha and James had two of the children, while the other three were from Tosha's prior relationship. Tosha and James, together with their children, were temporarily living with Tosha's parents while their house was being renovated. Tosha's oldest kid, Seth Denton, 19, had a troubled connection with his mother and stepfather. Their encounters were characterized by avoidance, and their most recent meeting ended tragically. The Rose couple's seeming happiness and prosperity were broken in a horrible way. Responding authorities uncovered a horrible crime scene, eventually termed the bloodiest in the county's history. Lena Maria and Tosha, mother and daughter, were discovered shooted at close range. Tasha's husband, James, was gravely injured on the doorstep and died from his injuries and blood loss despite emergency attempts. Unexpectedly, none of the children in the house suffered harm, indicating that either they were not the intended target or that the perpetrator had forgotten about them during the adult carnage. The cops got two stray phone calls shortly after the incident. The homeowner, Curtis Rose, first alleged that his grandson Seth had perpetrated the crime and fled. Seth, on the other hand, phoned with a different story, blaming his grandpa Curtis. Seth was later apprehended at the hospital, where he was receiving treatment for a gunshot wound. The study sought to piece together the sequence of events and discover the truth behind the Rose family tragedy. Surprisingly, only one variant was evaluated at first, and the alternative was only regarded seriously years later. Residents near the murder site heard gunshots on August 29, 2015, about 6 o'clock p.m., which they originally discounted owing to the allowed hunting activity in the neighboring woodlands. Following events, such as a young guy escaping, gunfire, and an air ambulance, formed a bizarre image. Curtis Rose, the elderly homeowner, told his side of the story. On that tragic day, he said, his daughter Tosha, son-in-law James, and grandkids, as well as a neighbor's youngster, paid him a visit. Curtis, on the other hand, was busy in his backyard caravan and originally disregarded the gunshots as hunters in the woods. His grandson Seth came, alerting him of a catastrophe and begging him to dial 911. Curtis noticed the dead corpses of his wife and daughter upon entering the home. He moved the terrified youngsters to another room and saw Seth depart the scene while yelling for aid. Curtis pursued Seth and shot him twice, wounding him. The inquiry relied heavily on Curtis' narrative, ignoring Seth's account until considerably later. Seth, who was first sentenced to death for the premeditated triple murder, offered his side in 2016. And, and this is after I've already handed the rifle and, and, and the clip to him. And we got to go inside the house. And um, I, I, I had picked no up before that and, and sat him back down during, in the course of the conversation. Seth said that he had a strong connection with his grandparents, particularly his grandfather, who urged him to join the army. Seth's version differed greatly. He dialed his aunt's number, unknowing of Tosha and James's presence at the home, in an attempt to evade them. He intended to accompany his granddad to the shooting range, explaining the gun and ammo in his vehicle. He discussed the weapon with his grandpa upon arriving, hoping to participate in target practice together. Curtis, on the other hand, opened fire upon entering the home, catching everyone in the room off guard. The trial, 
which had inconsistent testimony from Curtis and Seth, cast doubt on the truth. After five days of evidence, which culminated with Denton himself taking the stand in his defense, the state was able to establish that Denton, and not his grandpa, was the person responsible for the shooting. Denton said in court that he came to the residence to engage in target practice, shooting with his grandpa, Curtis Rose, but that he fled the scene as soon as he heard a rifle fired inside the house. Surprise, uh, uh, I didn't see it coming and uh, obviously it's a disappointment that we couldn't get the trial off the ground. Sullivan County District Attorney Barry Stavis told the jury that 19-year-old Denton destroyed the lives of three people when he intentionally entered the home and murdered his mother, Tasha Milhorn, who was 39 years old, his stepfather, James Milhorn, who was 36 years old, and his grandmother, Lena Rose, who was 57 years old. Some of Denton's step-siblings received medical care following the incident, according to the medical professional's testimony. Because of the impact of gunfire from one of the fatalities, a youngster had to have bone shards removed from their leg. The child was one of the survivors. Assistant District Attorney Teresa Nelson said that Denton had always had the desire to go on a killing spree and that his animosity toward his mother was the driving force behind the attack. An earlier statement made by Stavis indicated that the state was seeking the sentence of life in prison rather than the death penalty for the defendant. According to the sister of the stepfather, the family has been suffering from nightmares for the last three years, and Mrs. James more than can be adequately described. Amanda Vance, aunt of Denton, stated that the children who saw the atrocity will have to live with the effects of the trauma it caused them for the rest of their lives. Meanwhile, Denton's family members, neighbors, and the police are trying to piece together what might have possibly led Denton to allegedly do such a violent act. They are also concerned about the psychological impact the incident will have on the six child witnesses, all of whom are less than 12 years old. According to Anderson's statement, we have learned a lot about how much he has hated his mother for the majority of his life. He had stated on multiple occasions over the course of many years that he desired to take her life. According to the officials, Denton had a short stint in the army and did not seem to have any kind of criminal history. He spent his childhood at Mobile Home Park, where he is accused of murdering his family members, although he was residing in an apartment in Bristol at the time of the shooting. It is not quite obvious why he went to Rose instead of just murdering him like everyone else. Heather Milhorn, the younger sister of Denton's stepfather, said that James had informed her that he had an eerie feeling about his 19-year-old stepson, who was outspoken about his disdain for his mother. James is Denton's stepmother. She questioned his actions by asking, why did he do it to them? Seth Denton was found guilty of triple murder by a jury that was weary but united. Despite the physical evidence confirming Curtis' statement, the court denied the death sentence, instead sentencing Seth to life in prison without the possibility of release for at least 50 years. Thank you for joining us on this riveting journey. Subscribe for more tales that challenge the boundaries of the known. And remember, in the silence of the night, stories wait to be told.